Similar to what is in the slideshow in the upper right. What I'm going to be finishing up or making. I actually start off uh, usually just making the bottom. But we have a length of 550 cord here, which is, is this 30? Yeah, about 30, 30 and a half, 31 inches. Uh, purple 550 cord on this one. Uh, I cannot find my other uh, cord stops. So we're running with this one for now. Oh, it's a heavy duty spring in there. And it's, uh, which one is this one made by? Oh, I can't remember. I have them in my folder somewhere. I know I order them from, so. I usually make them out of 16 gauge, but since these are the smaller lightweight ones that are just for, you know, carrying stuff around, not the heavy duty ones, I'm gonna make them out of 17 gauge. Uh, this is 17 gauge galvanized wire. No big deal. Um, I did wind it all. I did cut it all. Did hand cut it all. So let's see if I can actually uh, do this. Ah, fairly decently without bumping everything and jacking everything up. Keep this thing going. I will probably lose track of what I'm doing. Hopefully I can actually continue to talk through this a little bit. Um, if you do stop in um, and you see something and whatnot, and try to ask a question. I will do my best to answer any questions that are popped up. And yes, I'm, uh, I see a lot of guys that they just do this and they're done. I'm a little more on the OCD or anal retentive side of things. And I prefer to, you know, have my chain mail smooth, closed properly. Because basically, you know, you have your, your chain mail here, a simple ring. You close it. I don't know how well this is gonna. I don't want to bring it up because it tries to focus on my fingers. Oh yeah, and uh, like that slice of my thumbnail. Yeah, I did that on that mandolin bandeater thingy, my bobber. One of those slicey, cutty things that you use <laughs> on vegetables. Yeah, I slip sheared the skin right up underneath and sliced into it really good and that was a whole lot of fun but what I was saying is I try to get them as closed as possible since these are hand cut Here. there that might work a little bit better yeah not really it's trying to focus on stupid shit there these are hand cut so you're gonna have a little bit of variation in each and every one of them on how they're cut 
the biggest thing that I've noticed is you look at it and like, oh, okay, it's closed. Or, oh, it doesn't look closed, but if you look at it and then you feel it, you're like, oh, yeah, it is. That uh, perception of the angles can really throw your eyesight off every now and then. It's not a hard deal. But it's small. It's a small thing. When you're first starting out, I mean, if you're going to start out or try it yourself or something like that um, I recommend actually buying your rings instead of you know personally I like people to try to do it from scratch because if you have the the word I was looking for if you have the drive to actually follow through and take 16 gauge say 16 gauge galvanized wire and wrap it around a dowel uh, a 5 16 inch dowel is actually a really good one to start off with for um, a generic standard size chain mail, which is pretty common that most people end up working with. And winding it, and then cutting each oops, individual link over and over and over again, you know. And then, actually taking the time and doing the opening the closing and everything else to get to the point where you're actually again going to craft and weave something I will I have mad respect for you I started doing chain mail when I was 13 no 14 I was 14 friend and I were goofing around and like, you know here comes Halloween it's like all right well Halloween's a month away so what do we do well we grab 14 gauge at the time 14 gauge galvanized wire wound it around a 3 8 inch deck all this is a metal dowel. We took the metal dowel, we drilled a hole in the one end. That way we could feed the end of the wire into it. So the wire would start. And then we had this little jig that was basically, you know, three pieces of wood, two pieces upright, and the one. And we drilled the holes out on the end. That way we fed the bar all the way through it. And then we had the, the dowel, you know, say this is the dowel. We had drilled a hole in there and that way we put the wire in. And then the other section that was still through it was through the, the wood. And we hooked our, <laughs> we hooked the chuck of the drill to it. And we put the wire in there. We crank it a little bit get it going we turn the chuck to get a few rounds in there and then we had uh, those heavy duty leather work workman's gloves that we ended up sewing a eighth inch thick extra piece of hardened leather onto the thumb and we hold that there and we'd, we'd start turning the drill just slow and steady round and round and round and we do that all the way down the down the, the dowel or the mandrel and then from there you get it you know the sections that you're working on you go into town at and 
cut it off the dowel, slide it off, and do it all over again. But in just under three weeks time, I had made a full hauberk. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't a full, it was a three-quarter sleeve full length hauberk. So it went down past my knees. And that way when it was bloused over a belt to hang properly so it didn't bear down solely on the excuse me on your shoulders it hang just uh, just above my knees or around mid knee if it loosened up so, so it was pretty cool but holy crap that thing was heavy and a 14 year old running around in a 14 gauge steel hauberk was pretty freaking cool but ever since then I've been making chain mail but now as age has progressed and military service and injuries ow shit I cannot do chain mail as much or as often as I used to which sucks because you know you go from selling it all the time to making custom pieces to I can't really do it anymore because I don't know if my body's gonna hold up today is a relatively good day. My fibro is bad, but the arthritis and everything is down. So I figured let's do a crafting stream. Let's make a chain mail dice bag. Since I know there's a bunch of D&D people and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and all you other geeks and nerds like me that like dice. There's nothing like having a chainmail dice bag for sure. One thing I used to do is uh, the Crown Royal bags. Those are nice dice bags. What I ended up doing is you take one of those those velvet style bags and you put it inside of a a chain mail dice bag oh, it makes it really pop so, you know, simple things right now I am just sort of randomly closing and I didn't count. I normally count them, but I lose count if I'm talking. So, uh, if I remember right, I think it's right around 118 or 120 something closed rings for one of my small dice bags that I make. And right around 100 and almost equivalent open but this is what I usually end up starting with and then I fill in all the way around and then close it up but what I'm doing is I'm going to show you just basically this is what I do this is just how I do it everybody's different some people you know they close a few open a few and do a few at a time so at times you know it oh cool I already closed that one it can seem like oh my gosh I'm not making it anywhere I'm not doing anything I'm not going anywhere that's okay everything will start rolling itself together in time oops there you go bumping the Oh, camera. 
Alright. Actually, screw this. I'm gonna use this as a start of the round. It's gonna be good enough for now. I already have a bunch of opens. And then for your open, you know, that's all you have to do. You don't need to crank them wide open. You basically just want them open enough to go through uh, to be able to pass, you know. The rings through them relatively easy. I've gotten to the point that this is about where I open them to almost consistently. It doesn't really matter the thickness, this is pretty much how it goes for me. It's just a whole hell of a lot easier. It's, it's uniform, it's consistent. Uh, I do uh, a right hand uh, dominant aspect so. all right uh, the other thing since I'm here the lineman pliers are usually what I use but since I'm actually filming they're a little bulky and they block a whole hell of a lot more uh, because of the shape when I'm doing 16 gauge 18 to 16 gauge I'll use these um, they're just you know typical craftsman style pliers or pretty much any pliers these actually happen to be the the slip joint style what I've done let's see can you see that there we go it's, is I've taken my file and I've filed the grooves down. That way, this section right here is the only spot, or the only sections that I use when I do chain mail. I don't put them down in here or anything like that. The only time you'll see me use the grooved sections is if I am adjusting a ring. And even then, I normally never use them with these. I'm usually using my lineman style pliers because the grooves are bigger and usually the adjustment that I'm doing is this. It's just sort of a smash. <laughs> smash! Hook smash! If you have a, a deformed ring that's popped up, I don't I'll probably end up running into one eventually. Um, and you've had it closed or whatever. Take your pliers and whatnot. You just sort of squeeze gently. You just sort of feel the pressure. Just a little bit give. And it closes it down. And it makes it snug in and shape the ring however you were going for it, it does take practice and I have managed to destroy several hundred rings or more over the years <laughs> all right all right um, I am in my Discord. I will have to grab my keyboard and move things around. If you want to join my Discord. If not, it's all good. I don't mind. 
Let's see, where's my social thingy? I am on Twitter and Instagram. I have not posted much for chain mail and stuff like that. So, sorry. Uh, my, uh, hands and joints are not as swollen as they were earlier today, but it's the only reason I decided to uh, go with the stream. We gotta do the strum, man. We doing the strum. Alright. Everything seems to be going good. Fine and dandy. That should work just fine. Excuse me. Alright, where did my... Oh well. Let's grab a couple more cashews. I'm going to mute my mic while I uh, munch on some cashews, so bear with me. Alrighty, I'm back. Take a drink of, a drink of this. There we go. Alright, let's uh, actually, do I have one that's easily accessible? You know, I might. I might have abundance. Easily accessible. Oh shit. No, you little bastard. No. Ah. A wire tree I got bored with. I have to make a base for him. With a wire tree. Little wire tree based off of a Japanese cherry, cherry blossom tree. Love those trees. Freaking gorgeous. Okay, let's see. That's out of my way. Um, ho hum, ho hum. Off to the rum. All right, let's see. This one's pink. And I think it's a medium size, but... Alright, yeah, here we go. Alright, I'm gonna move this starting. <coughs> Excuse me. This right here is what we're gonna make. Chainmail dice bag. Okay. It's deceptive. It actually holds quite a few dice. Closes up tight. The only thing I would not recommend putting in here are those really itty bitty tiny dice. Uh, I can't remember the size. 
yeah, those are the only things. If you do that, I recommend, you know, using your existing fabric bag, stuffing it inside. If you're going to try to do something like that. Now, this is what we are making. A chainmail dice bag with a 550 cord drawstring and a cord stop. I do want to know where my other cord stops are. I have a whole bag of them. Uh, but for some reason they are not where I left them. Well, I take that back. They are where I left them. But where I left them is not where I thought I left them. Which means I put them up so I wouldn't lose them. And I did a very good job because now I can't find them. Right? Right. That's what I think. So, we are going to go derpy derpy. Alrighty. I know, it's not my normal stream. But what we are going to do is here. Move these out of the way a little bit. We're going to start with the base. It's a... Uh, my standard bases are six in one, which means you have one ring that passes through six others. It's not a complicated thing, but it can be distracting or confusing if you're not paying attention and you're new to it. Hey, welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful night or morning or day wherever you are at. Alright. Now hopefully I keep forgetting to actually look up since I'm not used to doing crafting streams. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and my dumbass put seven in there. So see? Pull one out. Oh, I know why. Okay. That's the basis for the base. Ha ha ha. Bad puns. Alright. Now, this is my own thing. This is what I have always done with all of my bags. All of my um, hand mitts for the adult entertainment aspect is I put in a dual center so it's basically two through six so there we are there there's our base right there boom boom shakalaka all right now for expansion there's a bunch of different ways no, there's not a bunch of different ways. There's only a couple different ways that you can do it. And, you know, that's, that's fine. It's whatever. Sorry, I had to re, uh, refresh something. It went a little stupid on me. I thought my stream hiccuped on me, but it didn't. Alright, there we go. Good enough, damn hosers. <laughs> Alright. <sighs> Let's see if I can remember how to do this myself. I haven't made a bag in quite a while. What I normally do is for this bag size style all I need to do is basically one expansion row which for most people is two rows because that's row one which is your center then you have row two when you hook this in this would be row three this would be row four but I sort of skip rows 
So I basically work in two rows at a time, which I mistakenly say one row, one expansion row, so on and so forth. So if you get confused or anything or go, hey Megs, uh, what are you doing? Just let me know. Hopefully I'll actually catch it in chat. Uh, I hope. Yeah, it looks like I will be able to. My chat's actually working. Hell yeah! Alright. Uh, hopefully you can see this. Alright, let's put that down. Okay. Pass through. Two. Close it. Alright, grab your next one. Closed link on it. Through these two, under, through that one, close it. And then this link just pop over. See? That's all it is. Boom, boom, boom. I think I screwed up somewhere though. Yes, I did. I was going to expand and I didn't expand. expansion round like this I went through these two and then I go through a single I go through the one under through the one and then with that one ring on there it gives you an expansion right there, so it gives you an extra ring where my opens. Oops! There we go. Have an itch. Alright, so now we go through two and one. Close. And then it's through one, down, up, under, and through with one attached. And then it's two again. There we go. Uno, uno mas. And through two. Sorry about the view. I wish I had a better camera angle and setup, which I don't. I only have my one cam. If I did, I would keep it. I would try to do a different view to give you a better. my view basically so you could see what was going on Which 
happens to bring us around to this. This is actually where, oops, didn't open that one enough. I put one on the ring. Put these down. I go under. Then through. Under. And up. To complete the ring. There. Gives an expansion, which I think I screwed up somewhere. Yeah, I did. I don't need to. But normally what I do here is I count just to give me an idea on where I'm at and make sure I haven't overly screwed up bad. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Which means I don't need that one in there, that 13th. Which means I added an extra ring in there for shits and giggles, which I did not need. Okay. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, I did screw up. I thought I did. Let's see what happens. Wasn't paying attention. I was dorking around. that there. Yeah, that's two. Two, one. Two. I thought something was screwy. I normally always end up with about 13. You know, it's supposed to be 12, but I always end up with 13. Just because. There. There's the base. Well, the start of the base. Oops. Oh. It's... There's the base of that it starts off as. Right there. Just boom. Wow! Chainmail bags! Ha ha ha! Alright, what I was gonna do is I was gonna check something that I wanted to see. Alright, let's grab this. that open. Okay, what do we have in here? Hey, there's another, excuse me, another dice bag that I started. See? It's in uh, another stage. <laughs> Here's a six and one. This is a standard four and one. That's a six and one. It's a pain in the butt. It looks cool. 
but it's a pain in the butt. And then you'd need a larger diameter uh, ring to do 8 in 1 or higher. But here is a 6 in 1 pattern. I mean, just a straight 6 in 1 chainmail weave. It's fairly tight. It's got a decent amount of movement and everything else. So, I mean, it's nice when it's like this. It's a completely different beast when it is put into a round. It makes its own cylinder shape. And Here's another base that I started. I mean, just like this one. I was trying to get my camera set up earlier. So I started off with, you know, one of these and sort of dorked around to try to get the camera to where I'm at now and hope that it will work. At least for your viewing entertainment. I do hope my voice is coming through loud enough, so if you can hear me, um, please let me know. If not, please let me know. Why doesn't anything ever, like, keep track? I was actually checking to see with what other uh, bases I had shoved in my little box here that I had started. I uh, completed a few hundred dice bags a while ago. No, last year I should say. That one, ouch, that one up. Now we will start with what we got. I'll do one more round to give it a little bit uh, more of a base. Then I'll run a, so that'll be a medium. So we'll just do this. Say one, two, three, four, five, six, let's see, two, four, six. We'll go with seven for now. Two, four. This is just how I'm sort of, uh, keeping my mind going, you know. And what I'm starting is I'm starting the wall set. Really, Megs? I'm starting the wall section. Or the sides. Depending on how you want to look at your construction. On whatever you're making. But I figured I would do just a simple sweet dice bag that should last for quite a long time. This is 17 gauge galvanized wire here. I normally use 16 gauge. Either galvanized or aluminum. Just because people have a tendency of being a little more uh, brutal when they see chain mail. And go, ooh, chain mail! Me smash! I can smash it good! And then they always try to do a test on 
Oh, how durable is it, man? Well, it's not going to be that durable when you keep banging it around. Everything will fail. Let's see. I think I was supposed to do another expansion row, but I sort of forgot. Oh, God. I failed. I'm sorry, guys. I failed that. I failed. I totally and utterly failed. Oh, well. Nice thing is we can... There we go. We can start it from here. Ouch. Okay. I'm going to take two. And I'm actually going to work two in right here. Oh, nope. That was stupid. I didn't want to. I wanted one. I was actually supposed to put that one through the one. See, this is how you screw things up really fast when you're not paying attention. There. So we'll just do the one here to do an expansion ring right there. There. Oops, that's not a closed ring. There we go. One, two, and one. Ha 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 ha. So, I hope you are having an awesome night. Awesome day. Let's see, one expansion. And do two, one. There. Two standard. And an expansion. Yeah, get in there. Yeah, who's her? We go. tangled up when I was dorking around. I dropped a bunch of rings. And I said, oh, screw it. I'll deal with them later. Well, I'm dealing with them later while I'm doing this. So let's open some rings real quick. Yeah, sorry, this isn't quite right in the view. Sort of organize my stuff for doing it right handed. You can do it left handed if you want, it's just the opposite. And I put majority of my open rings all the way over on my right. I put my, usually I have my closed up or down, and I work on my projects but I'm trying to get things situated in here is a little bit more difficult. Okay, so we had one. Let's go with two more clothes. Ah, bastard. Doing just another expansion around the base. After the first, you know, joining together, you do an expansion every one. So basically, you know, 
one, two, one, two, so on and so forth. For this one, I am doing, you know, an expansion every other one. So basically, you have two regulars, one expansion. Ouch. Two regulars, one expansion. Or one added ring. However, you want to. look at it I did spend some time closing rings I actually have a bunch of closed rings did I just grab two I did I wasn't gonna do that see what happens when you don't pay attention You end up making random ups and downs. All right, uh, what happened to this? Let's bring this back up. <sighs> All right. My music stopped, so I'm gonna. Excuse me. Oh, come on. <sighs> um, that's not what I wanted. It's taken a while. It's really thinking. Dun 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 dun. Okay, let's try this. This is another supposedly no copyright playlist. We will go from there. Yeah! Ooh, that's red. Oh, I may end up, you know, moving up to uh, change the song. Certain tones and beats always end up giving me a uh, headache. Sorry for the delay in in working, guys. I'm uh, doing a little sluggish, a little sluggish today. But it's uh, it's working pretty good. So stream seems to be going okay. So I hope you guys are having. I well, hope everybody is having a wonderful night. Let's see, two, two. Okay, so one. Ready for an expansion. Okay, this, this one's not too bad. I hope my voice is coming through all right. And it's not too loud or whatnot. I have no idea about the music. Adjustment and voila. There you are. That is. Let me open this. Ah, oh, some bitch. 
Well, I'm not going to be opening that Coke anytime soon. <laughs> And, see, ta-da, oh my god, I went off memory and I still managed to pull it off, and I haven't made one in a year, hell yeah. Okay, now, I'm going to end up, see I spent a bunch of time I put together a bunch of closed rings earlier. That way we don't have to spend as much time uh, closing rings. We have to spend some time opening rings. Which I'm good with. But instead of doing all your own... <sighs> Fuck. Sorry. Instead of doing all your own rings, uh, I do recommend, you know, purchasing your rings if you can. Uh, you can check if you want to work in aluminum. Um, well, their prices can be a, just a tad higher than uh, the ones on Amazon, the Ring Lord. They use a, a higher tensile strength aluminum. Is it tensile strength? Yeah, I think so. So, it's not as easily to bend. Easily? Good gods, I cannot speak. It is not as easy to bend and misshape once it's interlocked and formed together so it makes a, actually a pretty nice chain mail um, here I'll show you a piece here there's a this is 16 gauge aluminum 5 sixteenths inner diameter right there but it's a bright aluminum it doesn't uh, rub off any black it's base it's jewelry grade is what it is this actually happens to be a um, a 14 inch is it 14? yeah it's a 14 inch toggle clasp that I made so not quite a choker but you know for a skinny necked person or a female or a, a young person. All depends on what you want, what you're looking for. But, I mean, this is a six in one pattern. But that's the aluminum. And these are all saw cut instead of hand cut. So when you, I don't know if I can, this will show up. Uh, no, no, let's see. Yeah, it's not going to quite focus right. It's trying to focus on the wrong things. It's one problem with chain mail, I've noticed. But the saw cut, I mean, it's a nice smooth closure. Especially if you spend just a hair extra time doing your closures it it makes it so much more worth it all right let me put this back in the bag because this was originally for someone and then they sort of pulled the douchebag move and 
backed out. So at least they didn't pull the douchebag move. Try to get me to send something to him. Ha 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 ha. No, no, no. As long as my body holds up, I can make stuff. When it doesn't, it sucks. I've been having a lot of no go days. <laughs> And I'm not even that old. I got fuzzies all over the place. I'm actually uh, just working on a piece of that like, foam cord poster board. I just had a chunk of it lying around from something. I figured, why not? That works for now. Otherwise, it's my green cutting mat underneath that I usually I'm working on, but it's all mucked up to eye hell, so figured we do it this way instead. Let's see. Ta da! Actually, gonna move these over. I so don't have to keep reaching over. I was annoying myself. And what I am going to do, lower my seat. I was craning my neck some because of how I have things set up. If you do manage to, uh, you know, you do your own chain mail and stuff, time, time and practice. But that's all it is for getting your your open links how you want them your closed links because every now and then you'll I mean I still do it because all metal especially if you're using you know like galvanized steels um, I mean even stainlesses even stainless steels and stuff like that they are not uniform all the way through so there will be some different oh come on word word differentiation differentiation yeah Blech. in the molecular structure well that correlates into the tension and warpage on your rings Sorry. <sighs> Today was the first day I could take the band-aid off. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Well, you get around to the closed section. It's standard one through four pattern. So, you go through one down through this one, underneath, up through this one, up through that one, and close it off to close your round. And that's your first full normal closure round right there. And as you continue up, this will start doing this it'll start curving so you end up with your cylindrical shape for your bag I actually have a bunch of pictures and everything else all in folders and everything else on how to do four and one, six and one, eight and one.
their uses. Uh, wire types, you know, your your steels, your galvanized, your stainless, your aluminums. Uh, the aluminum. Oops. Oh, my camera again. The aluminums are. Uh, I only went into, I think, two. I can't remember the them off the top of my head because I brain dump information left and right anymore. But the the couple different style of or types of aluminum wire that are used for chain mail for r rings and links and stuff like that depending on what you want to call them ring or link I use them interchangeably I mean to me they're the same thing because one person will say ring one person will say link link and you know you don't get hung up on either or they're both they're both uh, nope I don't like that ring they're both acceptable there we go that works just made a closed ring <laughs> every now and then you run into one of those rings you know how I, I talked about it earlier you know you'll run into one that's because I don't know if you can see it there's a little bit more of a gap here from the hand cutting and that's my own fault so when you close it it doesn't quite align right so it's a little off-center at least it seems off-center so you just align it so you get your sides flush and smooth and then your top smooth the inside is usually the one section that's never as smooth as the outsides if you're doing it right if your outsides are jagged uh, a lot of times what you can do is you can use your pliers You'll see me doing this every now and then on some of my my rings. Is you can use your pliers. Uh, what's the word? Almost like a deburring tool. So you can sort of roll around the edges, and it ends up smoothing it down, and you'll end up with a smooth ring that you can work with. Every now and then you'll run into the into those rings that are just too far gone and you just have to say, yep, screw it, it's done with, there's not a goddamn thing I can do about it. In that case, you just sort of have to chunk it. I mean, there's always some uh, minute waste when it comes to rings and error and where they're cut. So all mine all these were done by hand pardon me I popped my back so but since I do have years of practice under my belt they are I mean fairly uniform I mean you're you're, you're winding them around a metal dowel so the inside should be uniform for the most part the only excuse me variation is your cutting and what do you use to cut I really hope my voice is coming through above the music this time 
I had an issue. Uh, it was just really low. And I know part of it is I'm using my headset mic. Excuse me. I'm not using my Blue Yeti mic. So it doesn't pick it up as clear. But I also know I'm going to have to reset a bunch of stuff. And for some reason, my system did not want to take the couple of the software items to be able to differentiate the channels so that's why I reverted back to my headset just because it was easier I don't sound awesomely professional which is the one drawback but I sound good enough that people can usually hear me and as long as you can understand me, I make sense. Which, well, that depends on what I'm talking about. As long as I come through clear, clear enough and loud enough that you can hear me and understand what I'm saying, then I have succeeded. I do hope this is... This perception looked off to me. It was fine. Um, I was saying something. I do hope that the stream's okay. Oops. And is going, you know. The sounds aren't, or the sounds. The music is just royalty free stuff. So it's primarily just, you know, music. Alright, I'm gonna open some rings. copyright free type stuff you know generic I had a bunch that was old I mean, some old music that was you know 70 80 years past its original copyright so it's available for use free but for the life of me I can't remember where it went I figured, ah, screw it, I'll, uh, I'll just look on Spotify and try to find some, some decent ones running around that hopefully don't annoy the living hell out of us. Let's see how long this takes. I mean, I'm actually moving fairly slow. At, uh, it's not a slow snail's pace, but it's definitely not my normal pace. So, see how long this takes. I just want to give this a shot. I want to see how long it actually takes. So I figured I would stream. I will run this stream for the duration of making one of my small dice bags. And then, boom. What I need to do is I need to get my store back up and running. It's just ugh. only so much you can do by yourself as a single person. 
to get everything you know listed and online and for sale I mean I have an associates in marketing business general business uh, internet marketing so I mean it's not like I lack the know-how it's just there's only so much one person can do <laughs> there is not enough time I mean literally it's, it's what it comes down to is time See how it's starting to pucker up in the center, sort of like a nipple. And then, depending on how you do it, it starts to curve like a little bowl on the edges. Okay. Boom. It's starting to take shape. Didn't take too long either. You can look at that. Actually, let's uh, let's check something. What's the uptime there, Moobot? See, one hour and twenty-one minutes so far. That's pretty good. Cause I spent, you know, a good chunk sort of babbling, doing a rundown. Uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool, man. Right around. Uh, what do I sell these for? 20? Yeah, the small ones are usually 20, 22. Depending on intricacies in material the 17 gauge this one in particular for a small um, comes out to with the tax and everything else depending on where you're from uh, but usually it's right around $18 that's what I have this one set to I think I do sales periodically where I drop them down to 16. But that's just, I don't really pay myself accordingly with these. Um, I usually shaft myself, which I, I have found in the past. Um, my labor time should be significantly higher cost wise in part um, partially because of how long I've been doing it the other part is how anal retentive and meticulous I am when it comes to the joints the 17 gauge here are is the one that I uh, and the same how I am with any other type of material but the cost of the material for this is significantly less than 16 gauge galvanized or 16 gauge aluminum or brass, bronze, you know, copper, any of them. So it's, I try to cut sales cost for anybody, you know, that wants to purchase one. That way they can, you know, they can get their own dice bag. 
their own chainmail dice bag of awesome epic geeky nerdiness made by another geeky nerdy dude. Uh oh. Music stopped it looked like. Nope, oh, nope. Oh, it just popped. It transitioned into something else. I've always tried to keep the dice bags relatively decent price. The only ones that are expensive are ones where I integrate leather and stuff into. Then you start getting into the, you know, thirty, forty, fifty dollar range. But I'm also using sturdier material. It takes into effect, you know, I have to tool the leather and uh, do the holes. Ugh. Man, I wish I could do that stuff like I used to. <laughs> oh, man. I do miss being able to just work away. This kind of stuff is what I enjoy. I enjoy working with my hands. Always have. I would love to say I always will, but there are times where I pay, because I'll probably pay for this because my hands are starting to hurt. I'll probably pay for this one. At least this one isn't bad. It's not like I jumped straight into uh, uh, doing 12 gauge or something like that. Where you need a, a significant grip and strength, wrist strength and everything else. Leverage. You know how to turn and pivot and position your hands and your wrists and your arms and everything. It makes everything go smooth. And it's not too bad. Don't you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. We are moving along at a fairly good pace. I do apologize, it does seem to be blocking the view. That's the camera, I keep sliding it towards me more, I noticed. So I apologize for that. Try to move it back up here to the middle a little bit more. Move that up out of the way. Oh, and I chose this music and, and stuff like that just for the fact that I'd like it to actually, you know, be able to be watched and listened to later. Oops. Oh, hey. Here comes a commercial. Uh. Yep, yep, yep. It's a commercial. Oh, itchy, itchy. Sorry. <sighs> uh, we're back to needing to open some more some more rings here.
That's the one thing you'll, uh, about chain mail. Repetitive. Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. So, your best, your best friend is what you like to listen to. So, your music choices or movie choices or TV choices, something that you can listen to but don't have to focus on. So, I end up playing a lot of movies usually in the background that I've watched several times. That I know the scenes by the sounds of the entrances and transition points. that one. I don't like it. Uh, I nicked the edges of it, sort of mucked it up, and I don't want to, I won't use it. I won't use it in something I wear, so I will not use it in something that I make for someone else. Just how it is. Gotta be consistent, babies. Yeah. All right. I need a drink. My throat's getting sore. I don't talk that much during the day, so. Water bottle. Rah, rah, rah. Okay. Normally I do it the other way around. It's Coke. stand again. I have a lot of movements that I do a lot of times with my hands and my wrists when I'm doing chain mail that I never realized that I did until people started pointing in pointing it out this I do a lot what I end up doing is my hands slide down so I just sort of flick with my wrist to slide them back out to where they sit uh, sorry nose is bothering me uh, you know, in typical pliers. Like I said earlier, I filed the the teeth off. That way it's smooth, especially on the tips to where I grab the the rings and everything. This one I actually took a a chunk of black leather shit thumb a couple pieces of black leather that I had running around chrome tan and made a little ridge section so my doesn't slide over as often makes it a little more comfortable I haven't done it on this one yet just because I haven't gotten around to it. I've just been lazy. Plus, for some reason, it doesn't bother my left hand as much as it does my right. So 
so oh well one thing you will notice if you do uh, chain mail a lot is you will start getting calluses you will get blisters your fingers will get raw your fingertips from picking up rings I mean I don't know if you can see that but see the indentation right there you know part of it is I haven't drank enough water <laughs> but your fingers will start getting a little raw from holding links and everything else so you'll end up with these thick sections on your fingertips so it's not a big deal it doesn't really bother most people really you you're the only one that ever notices them anyway <laughs> unless your wife happens to be extremely sensitive sensitive skin in which case you better start uh, using moisturizers lotions stuff like that otherwise you'll never hear the end of it believe me <laughs> all right at the closing section which is usually the most frustrating for most people because it tries to close up you can, let's see if can get this excuse me if you have a dowel or something like that you can use that but boom oops Or you can just use fingers to close it up. That way you get everything aligned right. It's nice and open, easy to see. can be a little tricky especially if you're clumsy with your fingers that's usually where the practice comes in so it's not a big deal but there that my dear friends is the basis for that now one thing I started off with that Ta -da. I have this next section to go around I always do this when I make a bag the small bags when I do the the double open and then when I rolled that or when I uh, extended the the chain down to start creating the, the sides is I went you know the seven down I had the seven open rings that I tied everything together with and when I close everything up I only do the six I leave that seventh section that row and everything open why is because it's sort of a, a check for me to make sure did I do the right length did I do the right dimensions that I was shooting for is it the same as the last time <laughs> the other thing is when I get to here is I count how many rings I have around. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's 20 rings around now. 
what I end up doing on this is it's 20 around I remember right I thin it down to 18 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yep. And this one's 18. So that way you end up with your bag, and then I close it in just a tad, right there at the, the end. Yeah. <laughs> God, I've been watching too much anime. Okay. <clears throat> So, I basically only need to reduce it to, I usually pick the offset sides, that way you get your expansions, your standard closures, and then you get a reduction. So making one of these bags will actually pretty much focus in most of the style, the techniques that you need to pretty much do any piece in the future. Although this can be really confusing, I usually recommend just doing a straight piece just to figure it out from the get-go. But I'm gonna do it this way. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna do it my normal way. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. That closes it one ring right there. And then shift to the other side. Yeah, here it looks good. Two, three, and through. Close it up. All right, then it's just fill in your last sections and you are almost, or we are almost done with this chainmail dice bag. Sweet, simple, to the point. It's not anything extravagant. Definitely not rocket science by any means. Which I am so glad. You'll see me, I run my fingers along the joints of the rings a lot because what I'm doing, you know, you have your closed ring is I'm running my finger across to see if there's any burrs or nicks or if the ring isn't closed completely. It'll catch. Well, if it catches on your skin it's going to catch on anything else. I mean, there will be spots in there that you will inevitably miss. That's just how it goes. What in the fucking hell am I listening to? Pardon me. Hey. Um, yes, we're going to skip that one. Because I wanted to listen to horns and shiznit, I would go outside and go a few miles down. You know, go 60 miles south, end up near Detroit. And I'd listen to plenty of sounds and sirens and horns and honks and beeps and twits and twats and turks. There's a reason we live here. So we're not near that crap. 
There we go. All right. At the one reduction point. We're working back around. Oops. Yep. There we go. Reductions always throw me off. I mean, I've been doing this for. Hmm, 30 years and reduction still throw me off doesn't matter so that's the one thing that's sort of funny people look at me and go oh my gosh you're not that old I'm like, well thanks it's like you've been doing chain mail for 30 years well yeah yes I have oops don't get closed we are at this point but that's what happens when you start doing chain melt 14. And there's still things that always catch me. Just sort of catch me up. Especially if you haven't done stuff for a long time. Put these closed back in with the other closed. That way you don't have to worry about them going somewhere else. One less thing to worry about. Okay. Now you take your 550 cord. You can buy them in packs, you can buy them in rolls or whatever. Uh, and however you do your your cuts on them. If you have one of the heated cutters, oh, it makes it so nice. I don't. And I didn't want to bother trying to make one. So I just cut it and flame the ends and then uh, finger roll the ends. Which, if you do that, make sure your fingers are wet or you are wearing gloves or something, you know, so you don't burn your fingers and put melted you know, 550 cord into your skin. That's just so much fun. I am an oddity in that I have an extremely high temperature tolerance. I am one of those annoying people that can reach into an oven and pull out 350 degree items barehanded and it doesn't burn. So and it pisses my wife off to no end. Granted, I try not to do it. I am really good at using, you know, pot holders and stuff like that. So. All right. Now, what you do, you just feed your 550 cord through the top rings, just like I did. that I always bring it in tight just to make sure that way I can check to see how everything is laying in well I guess I'm gonna use this cord stop I don't know where my other style is. Let's see if I can feed this through. This cord stop is the stops I use for my leather ones usually because it's a lot more durable, but the whole opening for the one eighth. Um, now here, let me reach up and grab a piece of leather. For the leather, the two pieces of leather go through this cord stop a lot easier than the 550 cord does. 
So I usually save these cord stops for my leather ones. And I use these, which they're from the same manufacturer. And they're made in the US. So I mean, yeah, see, the Plains, Iowa. Is where they're where they come from. I mean, they're made in the U.S. Uh, if I remember right, veteran-owned company or something like that. But these ones are awesome for 550 cord. These ones are awesome too. It's just they take a little bit more oomph and finger strength. So when I started making the 17 gauge ones like this. I started using these because they were just, they seem to fit a little bit better. The tension's still good, they don't come undone or anything like that. The spring is sturdy, it's solid, but it's not as hard of a spring as this one. So, it's just preference. But, So, we do that, and that, my friends, is a chainmail dice bag, 550 cord, with a cord stop. The only thing left to do, the end. Come on, fingers. Told you I was going to pay for it. Voila, one chain mail dice bag. And that was the extent. Ta da! We have now completed one chain mail dice bag. 550 cord, 30 inch length, one cord stop, plastic cord stop. And what's funny is everything came from places in the US, which is sort of amazing in and of itself. All right. Now, how long have we been running, Mr. Mubot? One hour and 54 minutes is how long it took to make a chainmail dice bag. So basically two hours, which is about right. It takes me about two hours. Um, I can get it down to an hour and a half, but I usually say two hours is, is about right for a chainmail dice bag. Right? Right? Isn't that cool? I mean, use it for chainmail. Uh, if you use it for like, oh, come on fuzzy, there we go, for like change or something like that, I recommend 16 gauge, not 17. Uh, 
or 12 gauge or, or 14 gauge I mean 14 gauge is really nice heavy but very durable uh, 16 gauge is actually with a small size like this actually makes a pretty cool uh, coin purse coin pouch so I had a uh, actually had someone that wanted one for their Jeep I made them one but uh, 17 gauge but due to you know coins and everything else uh, there was a uh, one of the links gave away so I was like oh that can't happen so I replaced it with it with a 16 gauge definitely more durable and so far everything has been going pretty good so it is pretty awesome Byzantine weave figured I might as well do a little bit had little pieces running around here and then yeah let's pull something else out to show off this for shits and giggles alrighty well uh, hold on a minute I shall be back momentarily
All right, everybody. I'm back. Uh, what I was going to show you was Thor's hammer. Chainmail Thor's hammer, Byzantine weave. Just boom, boom, boom. This one's out of uh, bronze. So, sweet and simple, to the point. Uh, you make crosses, all kinds of different things. that all right now we had a light bulb go off or go out for the wife in the bedroom so I have to find a light bulb I don't think I have any light bulbs which means I'm probably gonna have to take the light bulb that I'm using right there to help light to light this oh shut up dog so with the cool refreshing taste of twisted tea hard iced tea twisted tea tastes like real iced tea because it's brewed with real iced tea it's the hard iced tea that goes down easy with a twist twisted tea hard iced tea all right that is that everybody sweet and simple so basically right around look at right around two hours um, if it's your first time of course it's going to take you longer so don't fret don't don't get uh, frustrated just keep at it slow and steady um, if you do have any questions or whatnot about you know chain mail or bits and pieces. I haven't posted a lot on, on Twitch here. Actually, I haven't posted a lot on Twitter or anything either, but uh, send me a Twitter, a tweet, a tweety tweety twat, or send me an email, you know, Viscount Magnus at Gmail. Um, you also can use Norseworks at Gmail. If you want, I have no qualms with answering questions about chain mail. Um, and if you need ideas or just want to BS, hit me up. I also have my Discord. Sorry, I'm putting things away. And, uh,. I don't do as much um, personally anymore just because of um, medical reasons. <sighs> mm. Drink, 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 drink. All right, let's see. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Container is trashed. I'm going to put pliers and stuff all away. You know, actually put them away. You know what you're supposed to do with your your tools and stuff when you're done with them. Which I still have a bad habit of leaving a pair of pliers and stuff out. Two pairs. <laughs> For those odd times you need to work on something. Thank you very much for stopping by. I, uh, I hope it was informative, somewhat enjoyable, a little beneficial. Excuse me. And <laughs> okay, I, I gotta give it a minute. There it was. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for stopping it. Thank you much for viewing. I am probably going to change everything up and bring up game and 
do another stream here in a while. But for now, this wraps us up. Thank you very much. Chevy!